a, nat, a natural concern of mine every time that, you know, I've gotten pulled over just because of the color of my skin. Like I have to act a certain way, you know, and like I've been coached on how to act when I'm getting pulled over and to make the officers comfortable that way I can go home. You know, that's, that's how I was raised because growing up black, you have to move in such a way that you make other people comfortable to keep yourself safe. And now, um, once my brother was born, we moved to a predominantly white neighborhood. Um, and I graduated high school with two other black kids. So mind you, our graduating class was like 800 people. Yeah. So um, the move is definitely great, you know, for my brother's sake and everything. And like my education was awesome, but that always kind of loomed in the back of my head, you know, being the only one in the classroom. Um, it kind of draws attention. Like even if you're just trying to sit in the back and mind your own business, like that's always kind of looming in the background. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely a unique experience because now going out in public, um, especially in my neighborhood, like I have to act a certain way. It's definitely, it was definitely very hard, especially um, when I was younger, because I didn't understand why I was being treated this way, you know, and it just sucks that we are still here today trying to fight for something that we've been fighting for almost 400 years. Yeah, man, I just feel, I just feel like, you know, as a black man, you got to be kind of mindful on how you go about life in general, on how you walk out the house, how you present yourself. And then when you go into a environment that's maybe not so welcoming, how are you coming off to people? Because how you come off to people is how they gonna kind of re perceive you. And like, I feel like as a, like a person, as any person in general, you shouldn't have to be so mindful on how you move in life. Cause you live in America, it's supposed to be a free country. You're supposed to be, cannot do what you be able to do what you want, but be able to live a free, happy life and move how you want. But as a black man, you can't move how you want. And so you kind of gotta be aware, like, like aware of your surroundings. And so like before this, I feel like life it was, it was still just difficult. And I mean, it still is difficult. Ain't nothing I say has truly changed by far yet. It's just, you gotta be very mindful on really just how you go about life. Cause you can't go about life the same way as a white person could. Uh, the area that I live in, my hometown, uh, it's a predominantly like white area. And I remember one time uh, going to a mall and I was young. I was maybe like 13, 14. And the reason why it sticks out is because I'm so young or I was so young. I was like 13 or 14. And I went up to a phone kiosk and I was just looking around the phone kiosk, um, just looking at phone cases and everything, but decided not to get something. So I just put it down and I walked away. And the lady that was running the kiosk got, actually was on the other side of it. So she couldn't like physically see me. And I was walking away and randomly someone just like comes up to me and just grabs my shoulder and like spins me around and like didn't ask any questions, just started like it immediately just patting me up and down. And I was so confused and I was so young and I was like, what's going on? Like, why is this lady just like literally grabbing me and touching me? and patting me up and down and stuff. And she was speaking to me and she was like, give it back, give it back. You stole a case, give it back, give it back. And I was like, um, ma'am, I, I was just looking. I didn't, I didn't steal anything. And my brother happened to be like not too far away from me. And he was coming back from another store and I was waiting for him. And he like ran out and like defended me and everything. But it was just very uncomfortable just because like I was just such a young kid. And I had no ill intentions, but like, honestly, like it, it felt like just because I was, I was like the only black person in, in that like 50 feet radius, you know, and there's other people at the stand too when I was there, but it felt like since I was the only black person there, like I was the one that was like, that I was the one that was suspected of, of, of stealing or something. And that's something that's always just stuck with me. It was just very uncomfortable, you know, but there's times where I go to stores and um, I can just, I can tell that people are following me around and stuff, you know? Um, 
a lot of workers will come up to me and like they or not come up to me but they will just kind of linger in whatever aisle I'm in things like that so sometimes like I can I can just like visibly notice that you know um there's also been times where uh, I've had friends growing up where their parents have like told their friends and the friends end up telling me, I don't like that you hang out with him. I can see him becoming a bad kid. Um, I don't like, I don't like him. You know, he's probably going to do drugs in high school or even when I was in high school, it's like, well, he's probably like not going to finish through college. So just stuff like that, where it's just kind of like these beliefs that people have that, I'm supposed to be a specific way. And it just doesn't really make sense that um, that they can just see me and just like make those judgments, those judgment calls like right off the bat, um, that I'm just someone that's dangerous, someone that I shouldn't, shouldn't be around, shouldn't have a, a sphere of influence. Um, I'm more prone to steal than someone else. So yeah, for me, it's just, it, it definitely makes me stay on my toes at times. Um, which is not comfortable for anyone to have to, um, to always feel like they have to almost defend themselves or do everything perfectly right so they are so they have nothing to defend.